Okay, it was time to start drawing again, and I was looking at my Rotring Rapidograph pens, and as you can see, hopefully, they are all completely, or this one, is completely dried out, just as well as my other two uh, main sizes. I have a 0 .25, 0 .35, and a 0 .30. That's my sweet spot in terms of uh, the pens that I tend to use. All right, now if you've had a set of these sitting around, or I don't know, you inherited some, them from someone, and if you want to know how to get these kind of reinvigorated, that's what this video is about, okay? So these pens have this kind of sheath on here, and you unscrew that. Now if they've been sitting around and they're all dried out, sometimes they'll have some dried ink in here. This can be a little bit hard to remove, so sometimes there'll be some dried ink in there, so you might have to kind of work it a little bit. Or you can also soak it in water for a while, overnight or something like that, and get back to doing it. Or you can just take it off with a pair of pliers. Just make sure that you don't clamp on here too tight, or you're going to, going to crack it, okay? And you can see that there's a bunch of ink, maybe, inside there. See how dark it is? That's all dried up ink, you know, that's kind of uh, come out from the, within. Now, in the back of your barrel, okay, these are all universal barrels, they're not, you know, any particular size, that has this screw um, teeth in there, or whatever you call it, and that just screws right onto this nib right here, okay? So, you get that, I'm sorry if it's not focusing real well, all right? But that is something that you can pull the, um, this cartridge out with, this ink cartridge, no. Okay, now that came out for me. Mine wasn't so dried up, but sometimes I just cannot get that out. So sometimes you have to give it a little bit of a wiggle. Sometimes I go as far as to, if, I, if I'm having to wiggle it too hard, I just use a pair of pliers. Just don't, you know, clamp onto that nib so hard right here. And I heard, I, I've used the pliers before in another video, and someone said, oh, you should never do that. I know, I know what I'm doing here, and you, as long as you don't crack or, uh, you know, um, squeeze into these um, threads here, you know, for future use, you're going to be fine. Okay, now this is what I do on these tips right here. This isn't shaking at all, so you can't hear that little um, piston inside moving whatsoever, okay? So what you have is a bunch of dried up ink on the inside, or it's coagulated and this one still feels a little bit moist so it's more sticky i just throw them in to this is just plain water here okay now some of yours might be so far gone i don't think it gets any you know drier than it gets and it you know is kind of beyond just a water soaking treatment So anyways, to the point, you can see that ink's kind of going back into solution here. So it is a water-based ink, okay? That's why I find water just to be perfectly fine to use in these. Okay, now one of the things I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this set overnight. I'll give it a couple changes of, you know, water too in the meantime. But um, I'll come back um, tomorrow and we'll see just, you know, if we can get these things going. Okay, this is not tomorrow, but I just wanted to make a point here. Um, I just went and there was a lot of ink kind of coming out of these nibs right here, so I just went to go and rinse them off in the sink. And uh, what I did was I, uh, I just shot some water right back into the nib um, openings right back here, okay? Sorry about the focus here. And anyway, okay, but listen to this. Well, you can hear that kind of piston moving in here. Okay. So that freed it up, and I mean, that's just with a... I don't know, we had it in the water for five minutes or something like that, and I just did a quick rinse off. Now, granted, I mean, like I said, these ones didn't seem completely dry, but it just comes to show you just what a little bit of water can do. Now, see, I dropped that in there, and I don't know if you can see it right in there, but it gave that little cloud of uh, ink out of there. So, so okay, so... Uh, one more day, and uh, we'll see where that uh, takes us with these ones here. But you can kind of see that see that cloud of uh, ink coming out of there. 
So it's really kind of freed up that little piston in there and it probably really loosened up some of that ink in there from just kind of shaking it around. So it's just kind of coming in here. It's just kind of floating right into the water. So, um, you know, I don't know, you be the judge of whether you need um, some of those other types of uh, cleaners or not. Okay, we've let these soak for maybe not quite 24 hours. And it looks like most of the ink um, came out yesterday, right after uh, kind of initially um, soaking them. I'm going to take these over to the sink and then uh, I'll show you what I do. Okay, I apologize for my uh, focus and exposure here. I'm on my other camera, but let's see if I can get this in view here. All right, what I have is just some running water here. You can have hot water, cold water, doesn't matter. Going out, so just continue to kind of put water back in there and really shake it around. And I can now I can hear that little piston really coming clear, but there's a lot, lot of a uh, little dry flecks of uh, ink coming out of there, and I can see that little cloud of uh, ink that's probably going back into solution with the water. This point uh, two five is uh, the piston is going just fine. So one of the things that you do is you take out as much of the water as you can, you know, after you rinse them out, just so you don't get that diluted version of your ink um, to begin with, because you'll have to work through that. It might take a little bit of time. All right, so this is how you um, get your new cartridges back onto your nibs here. Okay, so we'll start off with the uh, the point three, okay. I always have to keep thinking about these sizes here. When I don't work with these in a while, I kind of forget the uh, sizes, so. All right, so that is on there. I need the cover here. We've punched that back into the uh, cartridge, and we're gonna end screw that um, the barrel right back on there and again the barrels are universal they're not you know specific to the uh, the nib size so you can put any of them on the caps of course coincide with the nib size all right let's see how long this one takes to get going no time at all see that right there all right now here's the one thing that I'm noticing okay this is the point three, and this is the point three five. At this point in time, I do believe that this nib here, okay, it didn't take too long. Okay, my first lines here with this point three five, it was still a little bit clogged, so it looks a little bit more narrow than that point three, even though this is the larger nib size, okay? But I can see now it's completely clear so these don't get frustrated if it kind of leaves you with a broken line it doesn't feed real clear sometimes it's like this broken line that's trying to get out it's just because it's not feeding um clear of uh that dried ink in there here's the 0.25 this is a smaller size right here okay so let's see if it gets flowing just as easily as the 0.3 all right so just I was surprised at how fast that, that point three um, got flowing there. Okay, the 2.25 is going, and that one looks like it's ready to go. Um, you want consistency, and that's what your technical pens are noted for. But anyways, this is just plain copy paper, just really cheap copy paper and whatnot. But anyways, there's the, uh, the point three five, the point three, and the point uh, two five right here and there's some little dot patterns and whatnot, but they look pretty good. Okay Now this was the one that was especially dried and you can see it was it really came out choppy And like I said, I really had to work this one So don't get frustrated like I said if it's running as long as your tips not completely damaged It should get flowing like that and if it doesn't get flowing right away, you know, after you've applied your cartridge and you don't want to keep working it like I did just now for the video, the sake of the video, you know, I did a lot of shaking like that, just as this was sitting here from, you know, a couple minutes to a couple minutes later, 
it did seem like it, it dissolved and put back into solution some of those drier bits, I suspect, because I didn't shake it up in between that line and this one, but this one really got flowing well. Oops, <laughs> it's a little jittery again. Okay. You, you, there's only so, you can only uh, feed these, you know, these lines so fast, but anyways. All right, so anyways. Looks pretty good. As far as drying out again, I mean, one of the things that you could do is you can throw these into like a Ziploc bag. You know, there's, you know, there's those um, like Koenigers have those. I think they're called the hydrometer or something like that. You take these out and you put them in that thing. And there's this little sponge that you keep moist and you put them in there, and then you put this plastic lid on top. I mean, you could do something like that. I usually don't bother, but maybe I will if I'm not going to be using these for a few months. You put like a it could be a, even a damp paper towel. Don't have it sopping wet or something like that. And just throw it into a Ziploc bag and keep it out of the sunlight or heat or something like that. And maybe that just keeps that environment a little bit more moist, you know, and preventing the, uh, the ink from uh, drying up quite as fast. And just check that every now and then. You don't have to check it too often, but that'll serve kind of that same purpose. And it might even be more... Um, airtight than those hydrometers of old or whatnot. Although those hydrometers of old, they look really cool, and, and uh, I really like the concept. But um, you know, kind of just some kind of moisture, um, um, uh, you know, something that will hold the moisture should do the trick there. So, anyways, okay. So, anyways, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. Thanks for watching the video.